So last time we went through this example of how to set up uh, Kirchhoff's laws to solve this circuit that ends up getting you this series of uh, linear equations, L, B, and R, uh, that we then mapped onto a matrix. And the matrix is just there to make the problem a bit cleaner and to also set it up in a way that we can place this into a computer. Because what we figured out is that what we have is a matrix times a vector equals another column vector. And the first vector that's being multiplied by the matrix is the thing that we want. It's the list of unknowns that we want to solve for. And so we would like to be able to multiply by another matrix to cancel A uh, so that we end up with just I equals some matrix times V because then I can just run that with a computer. The matrix that we're looking for that will undo the matrix A, that's going to be the uh, inverse of A. Now, if you're in a linear algebra class, you will learn how to calculate a matrix's uh, inverse by hand it's rather laborious. It's one of the best tasks to hand off to a computer because there's there's not really a whole lot of insight that you get from doing the process by hand. I feel like if you disagree, you're welcome to work it out by hand or require students to do so as well. Uh, I just feel like there's not too much that you're gonna get out of that. So what I've done is set up over here uh, some Python that will walk us through this process. I've got most of it commented out there on the left-hand side just so that we can focus on one piece at a time. So you just focus on the code that's not grayed out at the moment. The first thing we need to do is import NumPy. Uh, this is the numerical Python language, which is the library that has all of the wonderful linear algebra stuff that we're going to want to be able to do in Python. So if you take this code from the link there, you can run it in your own browser along with me. You just need to have this at the beginning so that it will have access to all the linear algebra functions that we need. We're going to take our matrix A, we're going to set it up here, we're going to use np.array, uh, an array is, is a matrix, it's, it's an arrangement of numbers in a grid, and so we need to provide uh, all of the elements for our matrix, and I forgot to add a third row here, there we go. So let's read off the numbers that we need here, uh, let me go uh, half screen here and a uh, half screen here. Cool. So I'm just going to read off the elements of A here and add those into my matrix here. So I got a negative two, a negative one, a zero. I got a zero, a negative one, a negative four, and then I got a one, negative one, one. And so if I run this, uh, let's press the play button or control enter if you want to run. I then ask it to print A and it's going to show me my matrix A. Negative 2, negative 1, 0. Negative 2, negative 1, 0. 0, negative 1, negative 4. 0, negative 1, negative 4. 1, negative 1, 1. 1, negative 1, 1. Perfect. The next thing let's do is create the V array, the array of voltages that we need to have at the end here. So I will have a 0 and a negative 14 and a 0. I can even have it print V for me. So now when I click and run this, I have the pieces of information that I need. I have my matrix and I have my vector here. It prints it as a row vector instead of a column vector. For NumPy, it, it doesn't really make a difference what's a column and what's a row uh, in terms of those vectors. It's, it's all fine there. So the thing we're interested in finding out, let's go back to full screen, is what the inverse of A is. So I'm going to call that a i n v for a inverse and numpy has a function that will calculate a matrix's inverse for you meaning i can just say np.linalg.env and it will give me the inverse of that matrix which is wonderful because that's the process i don't want to have to do by hand so let's have it print a inverse for us you know we're getting more material here let's have it tell us what it's printing so we're going to have here's the matrix a Here's the vector V, and here is A inverse, A power negative one for inverse there. So let's click run here. And lo and behold, I get my A, I get my V. Here is my A to the negative one power, or A inverse, and it's a mess right because it's doing all of this uh, inversion uh, determinant swapping uh, elements around multiplying etc and that's that's what it ends up with so right because I didn't pick a to be a matrix that gives you a pretty inverse but the important thing about a inverse is that if I multiply it by a I'll end up with the identity matrix let me show you what this looks like we're gonna ask uh, Python to print for us np.matmul, 
So whenever you want to multiply two matrices together, you just use matmul, matrix multiplication. We're going to ask for matmul of a inverse comma a. So this is going to take this lovely a inverse matrix here, multiply it by the original a matrix. And we get a very special matrix here. You notice that this matrix is ones all along the diagonal and zeros everywhere else. This is what we call the identity matrix because it turns out if you take this special matrix and multiply it by any other matrix, that second matrix remains unchanged. It becomes, it, it, it's like multiplying by the number one, right? So we call it the identity matrix because it produces this identity relationship. Let's actually uh, print check for identity. And what's neat about this is that this process is reversible. If I take uh, A times A inverse instead, if I change the order, I will also get the identity matrix. Uh, yeah, anytime you get a number here that's times 10 to the negative big number, that means that's a zero, right? We understand that 10 to the negative 17 is basically zero. So it's really cool that when you multiply matrix by its inverse, it's the same thing as multiplying the inverse by the matrix. That does not always work. If you take two random matrices and multiply them together, in general, they won't be commutative, but a matrix in its inverse, that does, that does work out, which is nice. Okay, so what we are interested in is the answer, right? So let's have it print uh, the answer, right? Because what we're interested in, remember, we want to get out our uh, vector i, and the way we get out vector i is by taking a inverse, multiplying it onto v. So that's what we're doing here. We're taking a inverse, multiplying it onto v. That will give us our vector i here. So we'll run this. And I get my answers of negative 1, 2, and 3. Actually, surprisingly simple for all of the other stuff going on there. And so if I come back over to my worksheet here, I end up with uh, uh, NumPy giving me an answer of i equals, uh, what's this going to be? Is negative 1, 2, and 3. Actually, let's move this over to the other side. There we go. My answer of negative 1, 2, and 3. What that's going to turn into is an i1 of negative 1, an i2 of 2, and an i3 of 3 is going to be the answer. So that's what we would have gotten if we had taken those equations and solved them all, which is pretty cool that we're able to do this. Uh, I feel like faster using the, the Python. Uh, once we have it set up, right, you just, you know, you're not going to have me walking through this every time you do this, so it's faster in the long run. Uh, but of course, we want to be able to check this, right? So why don't we check what we get when we use our original uh, equations here? So for example, here I'm going to store i1, i2, and i3. Uh, just as these values here, I need to change that to a 2. So this is going to go down the, the vector i and just store them as i1, i2, and i3. You might notice that this starts at 0. Python, for whatever reason, starts counting at 0 for its arrays. So it's always downshifted by 1 to compare it to what you would normally call it. Let's actually put these back into the original equations and make sure that we get the answers that we wanted. So let's try print. Let's take this first one of negative 2 times i1 minus i2. Let's take the second one. Uh, that's going to be print a negative i2 minus 4 times i3. And let's have the last one print for us 1 times i1 minus i2 minus i3. And that should give us 0, negative 14, and 0. Drum roll, please. Uh, OK, I get the 0. I get the negative 14. What happened with my negative 6 there? That's odd. Oh my goodness, I totally missed the fact that I had a negative here on i3. I did not have that negative in the matrix. Let's go and fix that right away. Let's record a video from my future self to go in the previous episode. And so what I'll need is to just change this to be a negative one here. And we'll run this. And lo and behold, I do get the correct answer. I get a 0, a negative 14, and 10 to the negative 16 
same thing as zero. So we have calculated our answers using some linear algebra. We've plugged them back into the original equations and we have gotten the same answer. So to recap, what we have done is taken our system of equations here that we got from Kirchhoff's laws. We have plugged those into a matrix here. We have taken the voltages that we need to get out on the right hand side, plugged those into a vector here. We've calculated the inverse of that matrix and then attached the inverse of that matrix onto V to arrive at the answer here. And we've checked our answer to make sure that we get the correct array of voltages back at the end, which is pretty cool stuff without having to uh, rearrange this equation anywhere.